Hey, welcome back to Kieran's Training. Okay, so today we're going to take a look at the load charts on a Terex Frenner. Okay, now for those of you not from Australia, the Terex Frenner is a very common pick and carry crane that was designed and built in Australia. Okay, and it did get bought out by Terex a number of years back. Okay, but it is a pick and carry crane which does make it a lot more dangerous than any crane set up in outriggers because you're always working on rubber and makes things a lot less stable. Okay, so there's a fair bit of information in these load charts. So what we're going to do, we're going to skip to the main part of the load charts to begin with, right? And then we'll go back and we'll cover some of that other stuff that's um, a little bit earlier in the load chart. Okay, so first thing to do is we'll come down to the load chart. Okay, all right. So this is your main load chart here. All right, this one you're going to be using 90% of the time. Okay, so. First thing, as with any load chart, you make sure you're looking at the right one, okay? So typically you're working on your main winch, okay? So if you look at down in the corner here, okay? So I've just flipped this on its side. Okay, so the LMI Duty 01, right, which is the duty that you're gonna put into your computer, okay, the lifting on, is lifting on the main winch, okay? Now, if you go down, all right, 03 will be with the manual extended, Okay, then we go down to lifting on the rhino hook, lifting on the rhino hook with a manual extended, okay, lifting on the fly jib, etc, etc. So you can see this LMI duty relates directly to whichever load chart that you're working on. Right? Now, if you don't put the right duty into the computer, all right, the computer is not going to help you very much when you're lifting the load. Okay, so there's two main aspects to the load charts, okay, and it is the boom length and the radius, okay? With those two, you can find out what your capacity of the crane is, okay? So let's take, for example, if we have an eight meter boom length and a four meter radius, all right? So you find your eight meter boom length and you come down until you're at your four meter radius, okay? So right there, all right, you're good for 8,350 kilos. Okay, so 8,350 kilos. Now that is if you're straight onto the load. Okay, so as you see over in the side here, when you're in the green, okay, that is within 10 degrees of that center of articulation, all right? Now, if you turn the wheel a little bit more and you go out of that um, 10 degrees, all right, then you go into the yellow part of the chart, okay? Which means you will then come down to 7,250. All right, so I'll just write that down so we can have a look at those figures later. Okay, so we've got an eight meter boom length, four meter radius, all right? So where the two meet, if you're straight onto it, you're good for 8,350 kilos, okay? If you articulate past that 10 degree center point, right, it reduces to 7,250, okay? Now it's always handy to know this before you lift up the load, because what you don't want to do is think you're good for 8,350 kilos, so you pick up an uh, eight ton load, you reverse back, then you go on full articulation, and then it drops down to 7,250, which means you're now pretty well overloaded, okay? Now, the one in the white below it, all right, that 39, that's your boom angle, all right? So you've got a 39 degree boom angle in that um, particular case, all right? So when you look across the top, boom length, down the side radius, where the two meet is where you are, what you're actually good for, all right? Now it's pretty important to make sure you are looking on the right load chart, all right? And make sure that you're looking at the right part of it. Okay, now, that 8,350, right? We had eight meters there, we had a four meters there, 8,350. Now that weight does not take into account the weight of your hook locks, Right, the weight of any rigging, spreader bars, anything along those lines. Okay, so that A350, that's the capacity of the crane. All right, then you have to deduct anything that you have on it. All right, so 8,350 kilos. So what deductions will we need to make? So first up, typically we're working on the winch, so we're gonna be making a deduction of the hook lock and the hook itself, all right? So where do we find that information? All right, so if we roll back up, here, all right, tells us the weight of our attachments. Okay, so typically on a 20 ton fretter, all right, you're gonna have a four ton hook block, okay, and you're usually gonna have the 180 kilo hook block, all right? 
in most instances I find that's what most runners have had on them. All right, so we've got 8,350 minus the 180 kilo um, hook block. Okay, now on that hook block we've also got the hook. Okay, so our hook is 15 kilos. So we've got to take another 15 kilos off that. Okay, so if we bring up our calculator, we were good for 8,350 minus our 180 kilo hook block minus our 15 kilo hook itself equals, okay, so before we look at any rigging or anything else, we are now good for 8,155 kilos, okay. Now, if we were to have the spreader bar on, okay, we'd obviously take the 110 kilos off of the spreader bar as well, plus any chains, and whatever weight you're left with is what you're actually good to lift. Okay, now, what happens if you're on a side slope, okay? Because all these cranes are designed for no more than a 1% side slope, all right, which is 0.6 of a degree. Okay, so, let's get rid of that, all right? So if we were on to a side slope, right, we'll scroll up to our side slope deduction chart. Okay, so looking at this chart here. Okay, so when we were looking at it, we were good for 8,350 kilos. All right, now we had a eight meter boom, four meter radius. So we'll go to our four meter radius, right, and our boom angle was 39 degrees, all right. So four meter radius, and we can see our 40 degrees there. Right, so if we just come down to the four, where they meet, you're gonna find it right there in the 40% deduration. Okay, now, if you look at the bottom of the chart, okay, so take note, we're in a 40% deduration. Okay, now at the bottom of the chart, it will tell you how to work all this out. All right, it's a very convoluted way to actually work out your deration. All right, a much simpler method to work it out. Okay, we'll bring our calculator back up. All right, so if we're in 40% deration, that means we're good for 60% of whatever um, the crane was good for. Okay. The crane was good for 8,350. We've got to take 40% of that. So basically we want to find out 60% of 8,350. All right, so you can follow this down the bottom here, or the nice easy way to do it is you go 8,350. All right, now we want to find out 60% of that, okay, because that's our capacity. So we're going to multiply that by 0 0.6 equals 5,010. Okay, so if our side slope goes greater than one degree or one percent, okay, we need to make the side slope deduction. All right, so in that instance, uh, we are now good for 5,010 kilos. Okay, and that is minus, and then you minus your hook blocks, your hooks, your rigging, anything else that might be on the machine. Okay, now if you're articulated. All right, so we'll just cancel that out. Now, if you're articulated, so when we were articulated, we were good for 7,250. All right, so if we were articulated on that side slope, right, 7,250 times 0.6, because we want to find out 60% of it, okay? Why 60? Because we've got a 40% deration, so we're left with 60% of it. Okay, so 7,250 times 0.6 means you are good for 4,350 kilos. Okay, so that's how you're gonna find out the capacity of the crane, okay? Always remember to allow for the durations, all right? Now, typically I find the easiest way to do it, especially when you're in the machine, okay? Um, typically I will just always, if I see a bit of a side slope, allow 50% and that way I know I'm in playing on the safe side. Okay, now, if we go back to this range diagram, okay, so we had four meter radius, 
and a 39 degree boom angle which put us oh, oh sorry yeah 39 degree boom angle well right, which put us in this 40 percent of the chart okay now if we wanted to decrease the amount of side slope okay or oh, well sorry decrease the duration all right easiest way to decrease the duration okay if we were to just boom down so we go from about here where we are all right and if we boom down all right as we boom down you'll see we'll come into the 30 percent duration 20 percent duration 10 percent duration all right so quick and easy way to um, reduce the amount of duration is to boom down all right you will increase the um, radius all right but that will be offset uh, by the amount of duration you have to do okay so pretty much the basis we need to know about the load charts on the printer there is a bit more information I'll more than likely do another video um, later on getting into a bit more detail on the load charts okay so if you want to keep updated don't forget to subscribe and like all right just to keep updated on any new videos coming out okay thank you